I'm uh, starting. Yes, let's go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the blockchain today. My name is Jeroen, and today we are in the north of Holland. We are in Groningen. Uh, we are visiting a crypto day trader from Holland. He's uh, well known from uh, Dutch television from a documentary. It's called Bitcoin Not a Man and Terug, which means Bitcoin goes to the moon and back. <laughs> and um, yeah, we are today in his studio at his place. So yeah, very nice. We can be here today, Martijn. Yeah, no problem, man. So yeah, so to uh, to start off, man, uh, when did you uh, started in crypto? How did you uh, <laughs> got through the rabbit hole? Um, well, er early 2017, I started buying uh, Bitcoin uh, to trade with, but I heard of Bitcoin in 2000 and what was it again? 13, I think. Like yeah. people were playing RuneScape <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, hey, you can buy swords and shields with Bitcoin and Bitcoin is going up and down. So sometimes you have more and sometimes you have less purchasing power and stuff. So, um, yeah, so I already knew about Bitcoin for a long time, but I didn't really have any. I did have a Bittrex account, so uh, I knew how to trade a little bit, but I didn't really I didn't take it seriously back in the day right so it was just a joke uh anyway in 2017 i was done with my studies i uh, have a bachelor in uh, sociology and i was like okay I, I want to be more independent now because i was 25 26 years old something like that and i was like okay i want to go and well work obviously or get some money somewhere yeah. and uh a f yeah a friend of mine called me about bitcoin again and i was like huh this bitcoin thing let's see what is going on there so what did right? he say like yo uh, yeah he said like yeah bitcoin is sick now and you can like invest now and it's um bye bye it's bye. gonna go up and blah blah and uh bitcoin was like 900 dollars so it wasn't like he w he was early actually <laughs> <laughs> so, so he was like hey man uh maybe maybe this is a thing maybe maybe it can go somewhere so I was like, OK, let me let me just check because he knew I was uh, into Bitcoin already a little bit. And uh, well, I, I, I'm a, I'm a university student uh, um, back then. Mm -hmm. I, I was a student, so he also thought I was really, really smart. <laughs> yeah. So he was like, hey, what do you think of this? Right. So I checked it out and I was like, damn, it could be something. So I started to, to buy Bitcoin, started to trade a little bit with altcoins and uh, yeah, only altcoins actually. So altcoins, selling them again for more Bitcoin. That was in the beginning more of 2017. 2017 yeah. Yeah. yeah, like March, I think April, something like that. And then Bitcoin started going up and I was like, oh my God, this is insane. So I think I had, a, had around $4,000 worth of Bitcoin when I started and that became 160000 Wow. In a few months. <laughs> That's a good ROI. <laughs> so it was pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty sick. So that was how I started. And because it was in that crazy bull market, obviously, in 2017. Yes. So I had a lot of luck also, uh, timing, timing wise. But it was um, intriguing enough for me to continue trading. And um, when you were actively trading, so how were your trading days looking like? Did you participate in like swing trades? Did your trades took sometimes like a couple of weeks or did you really mm. were this kind of day trader <coughs> who is the whole day in front of the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so in the beginning, I was just screwing around a little bit. So I was on Bittrex and I was yeah. just opening positions, uh, buying altcoins. And I was like, okay, let me check tonight uh, if it's changed. So in the beginning, I wasn't that hardcore. I, yeah. I was day trading, but not like crazy hardcore, not like 24 seven, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, so I started to look and look and I was like, oh, this go, huh? I was confused because it was, it, uh, it went so fast. Like yes. the price changes, it was so freaking insanely quick. So I was like, oh, is this real? Yeah, so I started to, uh, uh, my uncle knows a little bit about crypto and stuff. So I started to ask him. So, like, is this normal? Is it normal that it that it that it goes like I don't know from fifteen dollars to seventy seventeen dollars? Like, uh, I think there was Ethereum Classic or something. I don't know. Yeah. I don't really remember the prices, but that it that it like ten uh, percent uh, in like I don't know uh, an hour or whatever. That it swings <laughs> like that. I I, I I was confused. I was like, am, am I doing something wrong here, or is this is this a test account or something? Mm -hmm. But it was actually the real shit. So I was like, okay. <laughs> So let's let's just 
do this a little bit more. Let's focus more. So uh, then I started doing it. Yeah, like almost constantly losing sleep over it. <laughs> uh, but it was worth it because all those altcoins were just booming in 2017. So hey, you had uh, just a quick uh, question. Yeah, yeah, Did yeah. you have leverage trading in those times? No, that was not existing yet. So oh, uh, long and the short thing was uh, no, it wasn't around yet. People were mostly buying Bitcoin, uh, yeah. trading just like buy and sell Bitcoin and, yeah, yeah. and swing traded with altcoins. Yeah. They traded I'm not 100% well. sure if BitMEX was there, could be. Uh, but margin trading wasn't really the standard. Yeah. And like uh, right now, it the is futures thing was new. So that whole pump to 2000, uh, to, to, to uh, twenty thousand dollars was also correlated to the introduction of Bitcoin futures and stuff. Yeah. So it was before that it was preceding that. But it, that, that were the Bitcoin futures that were not Bitcoin settled. Uh, yeah. Yes. True. So that's where the manipulation came in, yeah. probably. But anyway, uh, even if there was uh, margin trading, long and short thing, I didn't use it back mm -hmm. then. Uh, I know about it now. So I also use it sometimes. I'm not 100% sure if it was around. I don't think so. Okay, okay. I just think it's interesting because lately you see there's more adoption in yeah. this uh, margin trading. And maybe that's also because uh, the market has changed a little bit because it's really, it's <coughs> more difficult right now to gain or the past year to gain money with switching to altcoins. <coughs> True. That altcoin bubble was really 2017 in my opinion. Yes. First altcoin bubble. First, uh, yeah. Like maybe maybe there will be a new altcoin bubble with new altcoins. So but yeah. who knows? But I also think some of them will die. I always mm -hmm. compare it to the dot com uh, bubble of the internet. You know the yeah. dot com stuff. You, you know about that? Yes, of course. Okay, so I thought about you know uh, some altcoins are like I don't know MySpace. Uh, I want to say hives, but that's only known in like Holland. <laughs> yeah, <that is laughs> but anyway, a lot of those companies that went downhill, right? And then Facebook is the standard. Amazon, Facebook. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, there is some are just gone. Like I don't know, uh, yeah, da Daily Nike. Motion instead of YouTube, Daily Motion going down. Uh, whatever. So some of them will prevail, mm -hmm. and some of them will just die out. And in 2017, everybody was like, "Holy shit." Every altcoin is insane. But yeah, that's not the case, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. There was a lot of speculation back then. In the yeah, uh, there, there's still a lot of speculation. Still, but that altcoin is. thing, I think it's funny that people now still think uh, altcoins are, are... Like people are still waiting like, oh, when am I going to buy alts? I'm yeah, waiting yeah, for yeah. the entry points in my alts. And I'm like, it's buy, just buy Bitcoin, man. Like if there are new alts or some new developments in the in the alt scene, sure, but I wouldn't count on it just yet. Yeah, I'm I'm not touching out my plan <laughs> in general was I'm not touching too many alts before yeah. Bitcoin reached the new all time high. Okay. Then I yeah. maybe want to expose myself to a little bit more risk to go into alts. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes I do also talk on my channel uh, some uh, chances I see in a swing trade of Ripple or Ethereum. To mm -hmm. against bitcoin to catch that yeah, with a yeah, small yeah. leverage to gain a little bit Bitcoin. yeah you can do that you can do that yeah definitely um yeah but but in terms of uh usd value mm -hmm. bitcoin almost always outperforms the altcoins yes, right now i agree on that yeah but uh yeah you can definitely trade every now and then no sure yeah you can do that yeah compared to bitcoin i think some, sometimes there are some chances that are uh could be interesting Mm -hmm. You know, some swing trades, swing trades you can have yeah. open for a couple of weeks yeah. to ride a small wave and then... Mm -hmm. uh, do, you, do you have any of those trades? Did you make any of those? I trades? made one of those trades actually um, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And that was, I also uh, made a video about that on my channel. Mm -hmm. Ethereum was breaking out and I had a actually yeah, yeah. Ripple too. And I had a long position oh, on true. Ripple and yeah. Ethereum against Bitcoin on oh, BitMEX. Nice, nice. So, um, that was actually nice and um, on the ripple trade i made gains so i cashed that one out the ethereum yeah. i wanted to write a little bit more upwards and then it went down again. and then it went down yeah, and yeah. it hit the stop loss and i got out of it oh, yeah. but um okay anyhow it was uh, i i made some gains with the with the ripple trade and um, yeah. it was it was a nice opportunity yeah. and it was also very interesting to see 
how Bitcoin's price uh, affects the um, affects the the pattern in the altcoins yeah so, true it's almost similar yes yeah, so if you want to trade bitcoin uh, of altcoins versus bitcoin mm -hmm. you don't uh, only have to look at the chart of that altcoin versus bitcoin you have to mm -hmm. have two two charts open and one is the altcoin versus bitcoin and one mm -hmm. is the uh, bitcoin. bitcoin against <laughs> the dollar yeah and if you if you really want to play it safe you have another chart open with the bitcoin dominance okay 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 so this is the, the so for me uh, good point <laughs> what, what, what my experience was it is a little bit more you have to uh take more things in, into consideration mm -hmm. when you are trading uh, such pairs you mm -hmm. know if you just trade bitcoin us dollar like we do mostly of the time on my channel yeah we are f we are uh, recognizing certain pat patterns that patterns get confirmations with the amount of volume yes yeah, for sick, example sick. Nice, yeah. and then we are trading most of the time the breakouts yeah that is our strategy mm -hmm. and that's also yeah i was interesting with your strategy when you yeah. were actively trading you were yeah uh, you were less trading the breakouts but what was how are you like trading True. actively in those markets uh so what i do usually as you can uh uh as you can see here i usually use really simple indicators like bollinger bands and rsi um like i'm not really re um big on statistical analysis i am more um looking at the sentiment of the market like how are people feeling and the only two things i really 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 focus on is volume and price i think that's the most important th those are the most important two uh those are the two most important <laughs> excuse me i'm <laughs> dutch <laughs> those are the two most important indicators if you ask me like um price and volume so here you can see the volume is low now so in my opinion people are j now just waiting on the sidelines and they're they're wondering whether the price will go up or down uh and here you can see a lot of volume uh buying volume and then the price goes up really uh intensely uh and people were kind of bullish here and then they were waiting again so the fact that you don't see a big red candle here that is bigger than this green one uh, is an indicator that the sentiment of the market is probably pretty positive. Because if there was higher seller uh, selling volume than buying volume, then that would indicate that people were kind of bearish. So the sentiment is 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 good now. It's bullish now. Is is a bit bullish. Well, especially can, can you in show this the area? pump the pump from uh, today and yesterday? Yeah. So yeah. guys, is, you is the daily chart. That's the daily chart. We had a we had a sick yeah, it was pump. massive. Yeah. We had a sick pump today and yesterday from <laughs> seven thousand three hundred till uh, ten thousand five hundred. It's one of the biggest pumps in Bitcoin in this short term uh, we have actually seen da daily daily that's yeah. actually the yeah the daily pump yeah. the most craziest pump i've seen in my uh, <laughs> my bitcoin career yeah it's pretty crazy i think um so we, had a, we have a typical bot uh bot formation can you can you show it on the chart yeah uh we're zooming in on the, the dump um yeah no, may maybe make maybe it on the day one hour, one yeah, hour. Ma yeah, maybe a little short. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here right, you can see exactly. it. Here you can see it. Really obvious. Yes. So here you have that Bart Simpson formation. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, maybe you wanna um, you wanna explain your uh, yeah your perspective on that. Uh, I think the the, the Bart Simpson pattern is. Uh, yeah. The funny part with the Bart Simpson pattern is um, a Bart Simpson pattern normally is a. Uh, pattern and then we have a big dump or a bump so the price is moving yeah. extremely to the upside or to the downside then we have a sideways movement and then the price turns back from where it came in the pump or dump and then continues the previous price action and the the funny part is we don't really see this in traditional markets we are only seeing this in um, yeah mostly seeing this in the crypto uh, specific in the bitcoin market <coughs> Yeah. so and it's it's quite it's quite strange actually uh, i think it's because it's highly volatile and and it, i think it's because um <clears throat> the price of bitcoin is speculative you know and i think um that's why it's so volatile that patterns like this can uh, and uh you were happen. you were saying something about the miners 
Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, Maybe yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, that's nice too. Yes. Okay. So I thought. So my theory is. Um, so as you can see here, after this little sideways action from seven, uh, from from uh, seventy four hundred dollars here, uh, this sideways action it resulted in a in a, in going up, so an upward tra trajectory. But if we go back here, you can see uh, the dumping candles. Um, let's see. Okay, so here you see a dumping candle. And when we go back, wait, I had that on the 30 minute chart, I think. Yeah. On the 30 minutes. I see a couple of them, yeah. Yeah, this is this is nice, this is nice. Okay, so here at 8,000, you see a big dump all the way to seven and a half. Yeah, okay, so if you go back here, uh, let me zoom out a little bit. Yeah, maybe zoom in a little bit. Yeah, the decline, the, the the small pump. Yeah, the small dump. Yeah, I need to go to that other when he was 10k before. Uh, let's see, a little bit back even. Wait. Uh, my bad, guys. Wait one sec. Let's see. Maybe zoom out. Yeah, okay. So here, I think this is fine. So this this will illustrate the point just fine. So here you have 10,000 10, in, in the um, mid of September. So 10, 10 and a half K. Uh, and then there was this big candle over here. Big dump. Uh, this one uh, from nine and a half K to eight and a half K. So this is like thousand dollars just uh, down. And here you have another little candle that goes down uh then price goes up again a little bit and then it uh, wait wait it doesn't really wait, wait, wait. let me one. zoom they correctly do, do, do. anyway it, this, this is a good this is good <laughs> okay it's a bit <laughs> it's a bit hard to, to to show anyway here's that candle down here's another big ass candle down here is a big candle down here's a big candle down uh, and here is another candle down those and and then um, we started to get into that consolidation that sideways movement yeah, yeah that, that was sideways the last candle, movement yeah. over here so all those candles down this is the last candle down uh, I what what settings did I have on that previous video when I showed this I don't remember I actually. think it, well, yeah, I think the 30 minute one hour 30 maybe, minute. one hour maybe yeah yeah I think I had it on something somewhere over here but i had to zoom better oh well anyway i thought I, I my theory is that those dumps are miners selling um all of their mines bitcoin and their mining equipment maybe even um uh because it's still profitable to mine bitcoin right now so you can still make like uh, a profit if you do that but uh it's not profitable for for much longer you know so some miners here they, they want to get out like they want to get out of this whole crypto mining thing uh, and i think those dumps uh from like nine when we were 9k before it uh, it, uh, it suddenly uh started dumping all the way to seven and a half almost uh seven seven three two two even so i think those were miners just selling their stuff then we had that little sideways movement over here and then all of a sudden it started going up again. And then you can see some selling action, but the volume is not that crazy. So it's probably just normal traders or... Uh, the sell volume, you mean? Yeah, the selling volume here. I don't think these guys are actually miners. The The thing is, this last candle here, um, for, for example, it's almost... Um, uh it's about eight thousand dollars on average to mine one bitcoin right now in terms of electricity costs and stuff mm -hmm. so here at eight thousand you see a massive dump like massive like in in a one hour period so a lot of bitcoin were sold here in one hour but who has that amount uh, of Bitcoin just laying around, probably miners, you know? Yeah. So as you can tell, um, uh, all these volume, so this is a good indicator actually, here at the bottom, you see all these high volumes of selling uh, peaks, you know? Mm -hmm. Like here's a high one, here's a high one, this, this, this is pretty high, this high. 
So that's probably just miners selling all their stuff. Uh, and here's the last one, you know. And I think if we, this selling volume over here, if we match that again, then maybe that's that 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 would be miners again or some someone that holds a lot of bitcoin i don't know but anyway after that whole selling volume spike stuff we had this sideways action so comp silence nothing really people just waiting yeah and now it's starting to go up again and the selling volume is not that intensely high so yeah that was uh, <laughs> my input. <laughs> so, so normally when you're trading, I'm seeing you are using the RSI, you are use, you are using the Bollinger Bands and the volume. Yeah, kind of, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm usually just uh, looking at the price, the volume and the sentiment. Okay. That That's almost everything I use. I don't know if you need more. It's it's pretty simple. Uh, you, you can trade. You, you can make it as complicated as you want with like crazy indicators and stuff. And then there's some value in that. But I think if you can keep it simple, that's also, yeah. yeah <laughs> that's, that's also that's pretty, important. pretty nice. Yeah, I, I, a, lot, a lot of traders, they, um, they I heard from a lot of traders that the most important thing are price and volume and that that's also ah, the, yeah. the, the main things they are looking at. Okay. So yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's very interesting. Me personally, I'm, I'm using, <laughs> not too much indicators but i use sometimes the vpvr mm -hmm. the volume range per uh, per price levels and uh, i using the uh, ema ribbon uh-huh and uh, next to that yeah i'm using the um, estimated moving average uh yeah yeah, yeah som okay. uh, sometimes using the uh, stochastic rsi too yeah. or the macd for the uh, to have it to check the sentiment yeah 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 so yeah, that's quite uh, quite interesting but i also i'm also more a fan of this naked trading to just draw some trend lines look at the volume yeah. which moves were really significant and um from which pattern are we breaking out right now and where do we find the new support uh-huh i think that's very that's very important to uh the most important things and then the indicators next to us yeah they can help to give you confirmations but sometimes you can also wa watch too many things and then the market yeah. can give you like mixed signals yeah definitely. and then you don't know um or you get what to trust yeah uh, you don't mm -hmm. know what to trust anymore or exactly something like that can happen yeah yeah for sure man um statistical analysis has some merit in, in 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 crypto but i wouldn't rely on it like solely i would also look at the the rest like the the news the uh the price the volume the basics and it's it's highly volatile because it's it's not regulated the whole market is not really and we're, regulated we're, yet so it's it's it can yeah can go uh yeah be, right be careful with statistical analysis like um it, it it has value it has a lot of value don't get me wrong but everything has its time and place and crypto is is the wild wild west in terms of price action and volume if you ask me so uh there are a lot of outliers statistic uh statistically in in crypto a lot of strange stuff going on so i don't know if it's the only thing you should look at so you used to trade a lot of uh bitcoin versus altcoin pairs right like switch True. like switch uh, switch to altcoins mm -hmm. flip some coins as we call yeah. it right yeah sure yeah but nowadays like in 2018 the altcoins have yeah bleeded more than bitcoin and it was actually quite difficult to uh -huh. to gain money or to gain um bitcoin versus altcoin unless if you shorted the, the uh, altcoin. yeah true yeah so how, 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 how did you do it in 2018 and nowadays you are trading mostly uh, Bitcoin, like buy and selling uh, Bitcoin US dollar pair yeah. or Bitcoin Tether? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in 2017, I accumulated a lot of Bitcoin. Um, in 2018, the market was kind of, uh, yeah, no, it, it, there, was some, uh, there was some trading action going on, but also a lot of periods where everything was just going sideways for a long time. Mm -hmm. So in that period, I, uh, I started to do Bitcoin dollar trading. So selling Bitcoin for, uh, for dollars and then buying it back um on a daily for bitcoin yeah and then like a few yeah like several trades on a day mm -hmm. so like uh get gets get 50 dollars here get 50 dollars there you know and then um maybe every day get a few hundred bucks 
Yeah. And that's that's fine. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. And then you can do that whole trick again. So you end the day with uh with with dollars, so it doesn't go up or down. Then you go to sleep, and then the next day you start you search for a nice low entry point. But I wasn't. Um, so you're trading really levels. Like you're not trading the patterns. You yeah. you're really trading the levels. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, I, I, the the patterns. I I see the patterns, but I don't really. Um, yeah, I don't really care about them too much because I focus on uh, how can I do a, how can I get some money right now. So it's really practical mm -hmm. how I how I look at it. Like okay, so for example, if you have this chart, you know, um, let's see. So you you can see the Bitcoin price here. This is the Bitcoin price. You can see it moving moving around uh, pretty quickly. It changes pretty swiftly you know then it's, it's 10 bucks more 10 bucks less 20 bucks less mm -hmm. whatever uh, so you just find a nice entry point and then you just sell it again so I'm I'm kind of looking at the patterns in the in the in the big picture mm -hmm. but if I just want to make some money uh, on the daily I can just start now like if I have I don't know t 10 grand right now I would just wait until bitcoin goes wait let me get the 30 minute charts i always do it on the 30 minute chart uh i think that's that, that is proven to be successful oh oh oops that is proven to be successful for me for my uh for for how i do this stuff so i just look at when is the rsi low when is it low in the bollinger band area you know when it, when is it close to the lowest uh, and then I look at the sentiment a little bit. I look what you, what's going on. So if it's like nine thousand two hundred and fifty right now, uh, and it's pretty low in the Bollinger Bands, it's pretty low in the RSI. So th this could be a nice entry point. Could be nine two four six. Uh, so for example, let's buy one Bitcoin right now, and then in half an hour see what the price is gonna do and then you just sell it again or you just hold it until it um goes up to i don't know uh 90 or something or you just put in a sell order already um yeah you're really looking for those actually like yeah a lot of small gains which will com uh, combine yeah, uh, will the be a, yeah will exactly. be a big Com one uh, compound compound effect compound effect it's, yeah. uh, it's really big uh yeah definitely like i just look at how can i make a few bucks here and there and then you just buy five bitcoin or something and you just uh yeah, you just flip it you know you make a couple of hundred and you get out of it and yeah. then you buy cheap again you have yeah cheap it's again. just uh, just the same trick over and over and over and over again and you do that like five six kind times of boring. a day and yeah but it works yeah it works uh, yeah, yeah it works and uh, yeah it's kind of it's, it's it's not really spectacular but uh, yeah it works so Hey, so every trader, <laughs> they, they have uh, every trader has uh, a couple of trades you will uh, bring to your grave. You will never forget. <laughs> you win an, yeah. a set, uh, like a massive amount of money, or you mm. lost a massive amount of money. Yeah. So what what was a moment <clears throat> in your life where you had had such trades? Which trades are, are still in your mind? Like yesterday, like that that was the day i gained that much uh, dollars or that was the day i lost this amount of uh, dollars <laughs> okay um yeah i remember um oh there's one i didn't mention in the dutch version of this okay. podcast okay. so monaco that 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 mco i also uh did that ico and uh i participated in that ico now let me see if i can look Look up the price. Wait, I just want that coin market cap graph. Let's check it out. Okay, so it's four bucks now. Fifteen percent. Wow. But that's, bum, bum. Yeah, but in Bitcoin value, it's down. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> but in ETH, it's up. So yeah, interesting. But ETH <laughs> is also down in terms of Bitcoin. Just yeah. buy Bitcoin, guys. Buy yeah. Bitcoin. <laughs> anyway, so uh, this is a we this is a, a, a coin. Um, it's going pretty well actually but in the first of october october wait october 2017 so you, you participated with this ico of, yeah. the, of this coin yes yeah? so here in august 2017 it's like 25 bucks uh wow. over here and over here <laughs> over here 
So July, it's like buck. But there was even a period before this when the coin wasn't even on the market yet where you could purchase it with the ICO. So I purchased it at the ICO and I sold it at like 20 bucks or something. <laughs> you you, you <laughs> remember the entry a, price or not? Uh, no, we can look it up. Uh, MCO, ICO price, but it was really low. <laughs> Uh, Token price in ICO four, uh, oh, four bucks. It was four bucks. Okay, so it wasn't that low. It wasn't that low. But you got uh, for sure a four hundred. By the by the way, by, by the way, the, the thing I said that everything now is is actually go. All those alts are going back to ICO price. Mm -hmm. Like I I really noticed that it's it's really yeah, apparent. It yeah. is four bucks, and, and the ICO price is also four bucks. It's it's kind of the same. Like also yeah. with Icon. It's a, it's a bit higher. Icon was 11 cents at ICO. Now it's 15 cents. Uh, yeah. Good. Anyway, so anyway, I did that one and that was pretty sick. Uh, Dragon Chain, I also went into the ICO. Uh, and Dragon oh, Chain yeah. was like five or six bucks at some point. Um, here it was five bucks. Five. So January 2018. And it was also really low. Let's look at the ICO price. So that was a real good trade. <laughs> yeah, that was a no, no. <laughs> six cents. <laughs> wow. From all the way to six cents to five dollars. Uh, another one I didn't mention in the Dutch one. Yeah, yeah. English privilege. Lol. Was a uh, oyster pearl, which is gone. <laughs> I think it's gone. But oyster pearl had an. Uh, uh, oh wait, it's a. Uh oyster there was a vulnerability blah 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 blah. okay exploit okay, whatever there, but anyway but um that. oyster had this airdrop so you could get it for free right mm -hmm. and i got a i got like two thousand of those for free and then it went to five bucks also so that was 10k for free for in free an, airdrop. an airdrop wow <laughs> So that was crazy, also pretty crazy. crazy. Times, so uh, crazy time. Yeah, that was really freaking insane. So that's not a trade or anything, but I did trade it for Bitcoin, obviously. Uh, so how so how, how did you handle those gains when you got the the Dragon Chain? You got the ICO yeah, and the, yeah, yeah. the the price skyrocketed, and suddenly you had a massive yeah, amount of dollars. Yeah, that was pretty pretty crazy. So, um, so what, what did you do? What, what what was going through your mind? What are you thinking? Well, I was thinking. Uh, a lot How of people easy. have been here. A lot of watches, uh, I think so. A lot of viewers of the channel, they they have been in the <laughs> similar situations of yeah. the 2017, <laughs> where everything was exploding like yeah, crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy, bro. It was definitely crazy. Um, I was thinking about how easy it is to make money, uh, or how easy it can be to make money. Mm -hmm. Was the first thing that went through my mind. And the second thing was, don't be such an egotistical narcissist, <laughs> narcissist, you know, yeah. just, just be humble, stay real and really look at this situation right now as if you're not in, in it, you know, as an mm -hmm. outsider, like Without what the hell is going on in yeah. this guy's life. So I was just really rational about it. I was like, okay, that's a lot of money. Like, that's like a lot of money. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, 10K for free, that's insane. That's life changing, mm -hmm. right? For a lot of people. And uh, so I started taking profits because of that. Like, the, 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 just always stay humble, stay real, you know? Never, never lose connection to the real world, like the outside world where people yeah. just work for 10 bucks an hour. Yeah. That will always be the case. So don't become. Just kill your ego. <laughs> That's it. Just kill it, mm -hmm. and then you will make good decisions. So I, I started to write up uh, to 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 note. Uh, wait, how do you say that? I I grabbed the piece of paper. I wrote down some rules. Like okay, if something is ten percent in, uh, uh, if if one of my Gosh. positions is is like going up with ten percent, you take profits. So I just started to make some rules like that, and I started following those rules like without question you know mm -hmm. so and that that kind of saved my uh portfolio from the crash yeah. because i in those rules it was like okay so 50 percent of all of your stuff you're gonna uh cash out and and right now i i still do have that 50 percent of my portfolio back then and another 50 percent is gone Whoosh. 
<laughs> so it's gone. So yeah, it's uh, those rules are important, man. Write them, write them down for yourself. Yeah, my my plan in this um, <coughs> in this bull market yeah. is to uh, as I as I going into the market is is I'm uh, entering the market since 2018 with the strategy of dollar cost averaging in mm -hmm. into the market. And that's also my plan how I get out of the market. Okay. So I have uh, like a plan. The the moment we are crossing the 20k level. I, uh, I get 10% out of my huddle position. And when we go to 30K, I get 15% out of my huddle position. Uh -huh. So in, in that way, I'm sure that I that I uh, yeah, protect myself for um, a massive drop if I'm not incorrect about that we are in a bull market and yeah, it yeah, would yeah, go yeah. like to zero right now. Yeah. But yeah, for me, uh, it's almost, uh, I do, um, it, of course that's possible, but in my mind, it, it really seems impossible. Mm -hmm. um, but that's never never a good way to look at it because you always have to I always say you have to be a little bit like water and every time you have to be open for both scenarios mm -hmm. because if you only stick with one scenario so if you are only a bull then in a bear market you will get wrecked and if yeah. you're only a bear then in the bull market you will get wrecked yeah. so if you don't change your your opinion or the, I don't know if it's even opinion but your vision about the market yeah then, stay open yeah stay open exactly yeah, that's yeah, one yeah. of the most important things and then also um, well, what, what I wanted to ask you is you have seen the bull market of 2017 you yeah. have seen this big boom and bust you know <laughs> you have seen your friends your friends Fresh are calling you uh, hey when is a good time <laughs> to buy Bitcoin yeah. uh, what should I do how do I get into it <laughs> and um, right now we have seen the bear market in 2018 <coughs> and now we are in 2019 we had the first bump up yeah, uh, up the two on the daily moving average up yeah. the up to the weekly EMA ribbon so we could say uh, we are in a yeah. bull market. Mm -hmm. I would definitely say we are in a bull market right yeah. now. <laughs> but if you look at the sentiment of the bull market in 2017 and the bull market we are in right now, yeah. do you see any differences of what, what, what do you see? Um, so the sentiment is kind of uh, coming back where people are positive about Bitcoin and the, the price about Bitcoin. Um, but that's, I don't know, because three days ago we were trading below eight, eight K. Yeah. Okay, and now all of a sudden there's like this massive increase of, 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 of 20, 30, 40% in one day, really insane. And people are all of a sudden they're like positive, like, whoa, you know, but if it's going right down there. right now, people are going to get negative again. They're like, oh, you see, it was only for one day. It was only for two days, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. I don't think it's going to happen, but if it would happen, people would turn negative in an instant. But uh, you can see some people that have interest in Bitcoin right now. And because some of like a major difference is uh, margin trading is, is a thing now, you know, it's mm -hmm. like everywhere, longing, shorting. So with leverage. Yeah. yeah. And you have uh, you have like um, <clears throat> uh, bucked that can. Um, uh, wait, how do you explain that in English yeah, that they that they they need to buy Bitcoin to open your position? You know? Yeah, Bucked is a yeah. uh, is a, um, a company which settled Bitcoin uh futures mm -hmm. but bitcoin settled so that yeah they, they're it. settled yeah exactly yeah. bitcoin settled yeah it's the word i was looking for so the contracts are backed by real bought bitcoin yes so they have to buy bitcoin to even open that contract yes anyway so that 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 will uh uh if they do that it, it will make the price go up obviously and that was manipulated back in 2017 so well, we have the derivatives like uh, the futures contract uh, without being backed by bitcoin so yeah. the pure purely the yeah, contract that, that, was, that was in 2017 so people started to yeah 2018 when we had the big crash that was exactly when the futures ah. opened uh for the the, the contract oh futures okay cool. that were not uh, physically backed by real bitcoin ah like that so okay. that's also quite <laughs> coincidence you know yeah there was a news article actually on it on uh coin telegraph that um the SEC was 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 talking about that uh, the specific date and that yeah. the futures, um, yeah, that Bitcoin futures could possibly ruin the yeah. price of yeah, Bitcoin exactly. in, the, yeah. in the short term. Yeah, so yeah. that's uh, yeah, yeah that's quite crazy. crazy, stuff. crazy but stuff, now, yeah. if you like have your funds on Binance or Bitstamp, I think they got you covered. Um, so if that exchange gets hacked, mm -hmm. um, they probably got your back. 
So I don't know the specifics on that. I need to look it up actually, but I've heard some. Yeah, that's uh, the insurance policy. Yeah, the but insurance that, policies. But that has nothing to do with the Bitcoin price. Uh, but I, 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 I think it has to do with the Bitcoin price because if you if you can offer insurance policies to your customers, mm -hmm. a lot of people will uh, trust the crypto space more, and they can buy Bitcoin, yeah, or they can, okay. you know, they can buy they can buy Bitcoin without having to worry about. Um, getting hacked or something mm -hmm. so in, in terms of the sentiment right in 2017 a lot of people were on the sidelines they were like oh, i want to buy bitcoin i want to buy a lot of bitcoin but it's not safe yeah. that was the argument and now in 2019 you see like a positive sentiment again and safe. and it's safe and safe environment to buy bitcoin in. yeah there, there there are several places where it's safe not everywhere yeah, yeah you have to look it up i also have to do my own research um always do your own research i also have to look that up by the way because i've heard stuff uh that exchanges got you covered now but that's definitely a massive change massive because institutional money will will be able to get in now without uh having the risk of getting all of their funds stolen or whatever exactly yeah, yeah so it's pretty insane actually yeah i know from uh, bitmax the uh, bitmax platform has for sure an insurance fund which is quite yeah. heavily filled already <laughs> with dollars yeah yeah and i think binance and bitstamp also have also that have but don't quote that. me on that i have to look it up okay okay <laughs> okay so so um short term long term bull market we are short term in the bull market uh i think we're in the bull market right now yeah i think in the long term bitcoin will go up like in if you're if you're talking about years you know yeah. years into the future i can't imagine bitcoin still being only 10k you know uh, and short moonshot, term, what is your moonshot target? Ah, uh, my moon, <laughs> million per Bitcoin. <laughs> that is my moonshot. No, but no, but the moonshot for the next bull market. For the next bull market. Not the end game, Terry. <laughs> for the next that bull market, I think hundred k could be as a as a top. As a top. As a topping. Yeah, okay, honestly, my moonshot could be higher. But I don't know. Is higher. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Tell me. <laughs> Tell me, yeah, I think I think in the next bull market, Bitcoin could potentially reach between 180 and, yeah. and 380, 380k. But that's only 380. But that's only uh, the, the top of the wick, of course, and that the price okay. can be there only a couple of minutes. And why? Why is that your target? Well, that's a good question. Statistics? Yes, but mm -hmm. we have to. Uh, that's maybe better for another. No, but that's okay. So you base it on statistics. Yeah, yeah of course, based on technical cool. analysis. Yeah. If you take the the tops of Bitcoin and you make a trend from that, then mm -hmm. you can see that it, on the logarithmic chart, you yeah, can yeah. see that the the like gains after halving and stuff. Yeah. Okay. That the uh, the potential gains are, yeah, ma I think maximum at uh, f f yeah three to four hundred k. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the Bitcoin halving in 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 May, two thousand. 2020 2020 yeah may um mining rewards will be happened so i think that's gonna mm, be a make the price go up and be like an uh you know mm -hmm. like an accelerator for the bull market like the, the catalyst yeah the, cat, yeah, yeah. the catalyst exactly. exactly yeah yeah i think that's gonna be big yeah it, it has been <laughs> it the always catalyst. Been, it, it always it, has been yeah it always has been so if we can only predict the price on history, mm -hmm. then it should, uh, then statistically, it's the chance is 100% that mm -hmm. we are seeing that again. 100%. Because if we if we have seen it all the times in the past, yeah, then it if, would be weird if it. Yeah, it's not good that. to base your to base your analysis only on that, of course. Yeah. But if you would do that, then exactly. you would have a really. Well, I, I, really I also, high I also take it into account, definitely. Yeah. So statistics are definitely uh, nice to look at. If you're gonna day trade, I wouldn't look at it too much, just a little bit. Yeah. So it's um, pretty dependent on on what you want to do in this crypto space and what your plan is and what your long term plan, short term plan is, and whatever. And maybe you have different wallets, one for long term, one for short term. Yeah, auto stack, your yeah. trading stack. Yeah, exactly. Course. You can do whatever you want, actually. So you can use both uh, the sentiments price and volume um, tactic, which is pretty easy and basic. And you can also do the statistical thing for, yeah, I don't know, you can combine them. Hey, and then if we don't have a look at the Bitcoin price, but if we have a look at the fundamentals of Bitcoin, yeah, are you a true <coughs> believer of the fundamentals of Bitcoin? Um, yeah, I am. If you look at countries like, like Greece and uh, Venezuela, 
where their own currency uh, went down the drain in no Degree. time. Yeah. Um, there are some people there that 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 uh, bought some Bitcoin or crypto and still have that, and they are uh, kind of saved from the whole economical uh, environment of their yeah, of collapse. Their, yeah, exactly. So there are a lot of people that can actually live off of their crypto now, or maybe um, go to another country with that money. And mm -hmm. also, <clears throat> I don't know if you're if you're stuck in a different country um bitcoin can really help you out like it can really yeah i don't know it can go up and it can also be a safeguard to to Protect your own wealth. currency going down yeah it's like a store of value right yeah so here in the west a lot of people don't really um uh realize how hard it is in some other countries on this planet you know so mm -hmm. crypto is a real lifesaver for some people and here in the west a lot of people just brush it off like ah oh, i don't need that shit <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually really important for some people to have a backup against their own uh, political government you know yeah i i've made a video about um, the most proven use case for bitcoin oh okay. and i i came to the conclusion that it is um bitcoin is a good solution for um economic instability okay right so when currencies are failing bitcoin yeah. bitcoin has a um nice how do you say it? bitcoin has a um value a yeah. value a value in uh, it's, a, it's a safeguard it's a, it's a safeguard but uh who's, who's ever got the word um yeah bitcoin can be used as a value in mm -hmm. in uh, uh, countries where the yeah where the currencies de uh, deflate over it <laughs> Inflate. Inflate, yeah. Inflate. Is that in Nederland? Wait, wait, wait. Mag niet uit. That is, yeah, that is. We're talking Dutch now. Talking Dutch, yeah. <laughs> no, but I, no, but I thought I think the most proven use case for Bitcoin is in um, economic in countries where the economic mm -hmm. is unstable mm -hmm. and where the currencies are failing. Mm -hmm. You know, but I also yeah. saw, um, yeah, another use case lately, and that is the one. Um, where people in Hong Kong are using Bitcoin because their bank accounts uh, possibly oh, are getting frozen. getting frozen yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Bitcoin gives them the power mm -hmm. to fund their activities still while the maybe the government or the banks are freezing their yeah, funds. Yeah. And all those ATMs are out of money, right? That was also that was also a thing. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> that, that's actually true. Yeah, but that's also the same reason how Julian Assange funded uh, WikiLeaks because oh, yeah. WikiLeaks also got shut down from a payment um, payment channels like PayPal and stuff. So uh, yeah, th mm -hmm. they opened a Bitcoin uh, channel. People could donate Bitcoin, and that's how <laughs> they how they funded nice. the whole project afterwards. Cool. So it gives next to uh, next to unstable ec economies. It also gives a lot of value in. Uh, yeah you, you have the power you get your power back over your funds and yeah, yeah the, also the funny part is here in the western we don't we don't think too much about it because when we are we are, when we are transferring money we we don't we don't easily get blocked or transactions are not getting through mm -hmm. you know there's we don't have that problem so much but in other countries like hong kong venezuela mm -hmm. zimbabwe there mm -hmm. we there you see that more often mm -hmm. so it's it's difficult for us to uh, realize the potential of bitcoin if um of the real use case of bitcoin when we are not in a crisis at the moment mm -hmm. true um yeah i think bitcoin has some merit you can you can definitely use it in a lot of uh circumstances i think it it's uh, mostly a store of value though um like it's being used as like digital gold right now mm -hmm. uh i don't know if it's gonna be like a regular payment thing i don't know i think there another crypto will be uh, the crypto where you buy your daily coffee with for example if bitcoin is gonna be that um yeah i don't know i, I don't think it's gonna be that because it's just used as gold and people don't want uh the circulation the circulating supply to be like crazy high mm -hmm. because uh the price will go down so I think a lot of people will hold Bitcoin and also use it as a store of value because of that. And I think the price will go up because of that. Anyway, um, there are definitely some use cases, uh, especially outside of the whole uh, West. Um, yeah, and it's also in the West. It's it's still it, it works. If I want to give you a hundred dollars right now, I can, like yeah. like that in Bitcoin. So yeah. it works. 
but um, so, so you don't think that Bitcoin will replace fiat currencies? No, I think it will exist. It, it will coexist, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But also, don't forget that dollar and euro can also crash. Of course, it can, yeah, it can, yeah. it can always go down. So we also had that here in the Netherlands with the the, the gulden, gulden. Yeah, it got replaced by the euro for a reason, you know. So there's always stuff going on there. Never yeah, be okay. never be too naive. Maybe a dollar can also crash. Um, I think Bitcoin will coexist with uh, fiat and gold for the upcoming years. I don't know if it's gonna be like a whole takeover of crypto because it's still dependent on internet connection and all that sort of stuff. So, mm -hmm. and it also has to be easy. So you can use Bitcoin without the internet, but it's complicated that way. If you use it with the internet, it's pretty easy. So if you can make it easy for people, it, it will definitely work next to fiat and stuff, but I don't think it will be replaced like a hundred percent. Yeah, I think Any, like anytime soon. You know what's also possible is that uh, <coughs> maybe there there will be a new stablecoin. Yeah. And the stablecoin will have maybe improved technology of Bitcoin, and the stablecoin will be backed by several things such as yeah. a Bitcoin or a bucket full of cryptos, gold, and maybe some um, uh, yeah derivatives of the housing market or, yeah. or stocks, so that money is not only money anymore but that money is really backed by a lot of commodities yes. and uh, things like bitcoin gold <laughs> and uh, stocks yeah yeah and bitcoin that we gold. see that <laughs> in the back and head uh, that we see that in a package of yeah. a stable coin and that we are uh, yeah using that as a the daily day-to-day day -day payments yeah it could work could work yeah but uh big bitcoin is really fluctuating right now really volatile housing market also volatile but yeah. it, it could work it could definitely it could definitely work yeah yeah i mean in the long term when uh yeah, when, when yeah, we are sure. seeing the currencies losing uh, losing a strength you know i see the the euro is also has lost a lot of strength compared yeah. to the dollar since the last years ah, okay uh, actually quite uh, quite a lot mm -hmm. um they wait a lot uh, okay for the average joe uh, yeah. today to jump into crypto uh, we had uh, the boom and bust in 2017 a lot of people gained money but the most uh, most of them they lost money mm -hmm. the new people who are now entering into the space mm -hmm. what what kind of advice would you give them to don't get wrecked in, into the next <laughs> bull market <laughs> uh, i think the most simple advice is just dollar cost averaging yeah that so that means that you buy a little bit of bitcoin every month so if you make like, um, if you're, uh, let's just say, for example, your salary is 2000 bucks uh, per month, right? You put 10% of that in Bitcoin. So 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, why? Because every month you will buy the, 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 the average, right? You right? get an average you, price. You, okay. you, you get in at a certain price. But if you like, uh, if you see that over like 12 months, you know, you, you, you kind you have of an you have an average entry price. Yeah. So that's why it's called dollar cost averaging. So that that has proven to be like successful since forever. So everybody that does that um, never really uh, has any losses. Like they don't really have losses because of that. So it's, it's proven to be successful. So that's mm -hmm. one. Also, like, um, secondly, get some money to start with like you need some capital to start so for with. your huddle position and eh? not for not for your day-to-day -day trading or also for your day-to-day -day trading well, if you if you even want to get into the space you need some money mm -hmm. like you need some 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 capital to to start with to buy your first the BTC. Yeah. yeah so a lot of people um they they they, they don't know how to start because they don't have uh, several thousand dollars laying around which is actually kind of true because it has, it's not a weird argument. You, you need money to start with. Mm -hmm. Like if you're gonna buy 50 bucks of Bitcoin, it's fine, you can do that every month and that's fine, but you won't be a millionaire like next year or something. It's not gonna work like that. No. So you need- It's a long-term uh, Yeah, it's lo that's a long-term plan, the dollar cost averaging stuff. And like, if you wanna, if you wanna uh, be more aggressive, be sure to like, I don't know, um, get a few thousand dollars, maybe work your ass off or something and get some extra money to really yeah. go in, you know? So that's, that's like my second tip. If you're more an, of the aggressive type, that's what I would do. 
um, and thirdly, um, maybe use stop losses if you uh, like never play with money you can't miss. So always use like extra money mm -hmm. because otherwise you're gonna fuck your life up. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna have an impact gonna, on your yeah. personal life. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna screw your life up if you use with money you can't really use. And emotions will take over and you'll make bad decisions like on yeah. on the on the stock market or in the crypto market. But um, just make, be sure to, to, to use stop losses and like really check your balance. Like just make good trades and it's not that hard. Just don't lose money. <laughs> yeah, Try it. not to lose money. Um, that's it, the biggest tip. That's don't, the biggest tip. <laughs> don't lose money. Don't yeah. lose money. But you can do that with stop losses and just buying yeah. Bitcoin and then selling it when it's higher and just stay in dollars if you uh, like for example right now if you if you sell one Bitcoin right now you have nine thousand and a hundred and twenty dollars mm -hmm. and nothing will happen to that nine hundred uh, nine nine thousand hundred and twenty dollars nothing will happen if you sell it right now you yeah. have it it's stable right and if you buy Bitcoin now then the price is gonna go up and down if you buy Bitcoin now and you go out to I don't know to shop or something yeah, it's probably a bad idea like it, you, you you have to pay attention like okay so let's say you buy Bitcoin now you really have to pay attention what's the price gonna do and when am I gonna sell it now you lost eight bucks yeah. right now you lost nine bucks <laughs> so if you, if you just kept it in dollars you would have kept your money so yeah it's a pretty it sounds simple like don't lose money but it's actually it it is actually also pretty simple. But, yeah, but I also think if you if you're a true believer in the yeah the concept behind Bitcoin, the use case behind Bitcoin, yeah, then it's also nice to have a hodl stack. Oh sure. Which you don't touch at all, and you don't have to worry about the dollar value. Yeah. Actually, on the short term, you just have your hodl stack. Mm -hmm. You don't touch that for yes. years. You're just adding up to that. Yeah, to that, that's uh, a, that's a, that's a bit paradoxical because it's like it, it, it won't it it will probably won't make you any money. You can make money with Bitcoin. So if you like have a hodl bag, it doesn't that money doesn't really help you make more money in terms it of trade. Yes, that that's true. You don't use it as a leverage to yeah. make more money. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But it's still good for your emotions. Like it keeps you calm. You're like, okay, I do have five Bitcoin and in it, cold storage over and there. And it also makes it's you like an, an investor. You know, you you are an investor, not only a trader. True. Because if you are trading and you're only trading you also always put your money at risk yes. and if you if you invest and save it for the long term you have a um you, ha you have multiple baskets yeah. where you and can you get you have more ten from. you have more attention for your daily life than also yeah and that's also uh underestimated how much time you lose if you trade all day uh you need to live life also so don't uh, don't don't forget that yeah, that's true. Yeah, that, that's true. Trading costs a lot of energy and um, yeah. social uh, <laughs> social suicide. Social suicide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you really it's need pretty to. Pretty hardcore. Uh, <laughs> for me personally, I'm uh, I'm really the meditating uh, kind of guy. I really yeah. like to uh, to meditate and to to ease myself before I enter the markets and before I uh, yeah, nice. making trades. Yeah. Um, I don't want to let emotion. Uh, take uh, take control yeah yeah good point emotion is uh, your enemy you have to be rational in this market because emotions are gonna tell you to to sell at the at the wrong time because if it goes down you're like oh I have to sell immediately I have to sell right now and if it goes up you're like oh I have to invest everything FOMO oh my god but people forget uh, to get hyped when uh, it goes down if it goes down Mm -hmm. All the way to seven thousand. You should celebrate that shit, because you can buy more, and it's so cheap. Man, like I everybody here was sad and depressed, and I was like gains. And what happens? Massive gains. So just stick <laughs> stick to the rules. Buy low, sell <laughs> high, and yeah. voila. <laughs> Guys, that's the best tip of today. <laughs> You buy low and you sell high. Yes. <laughs> Martijn, is there anything else you wanna you wanna give to the audience? Uh, you wanna share? You wanna you wanna leave at the audience? Yeah, I'm making a a course on on Bitcoin and crypto and stuff. So if you are interested in that, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube cha channel for updates. Uh, link will be 
below in the description and stuff, whatever. Also, subscribe to this man. <laughs> subscribe <laughs> to his channel. Like his videos. Uh, be sure to share it around so it gets noticed by the algorithms and whatever. Um, yeah, and I think um, last thing I want to say in terms of crypto, I think 2020 is going to be amazing in terms of price. I totally agree on yes, that. Man. So that's going to be sick. <laughs> yeah, bro. Can't wait. Then, Martijn, I want to thank you for your time. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks, man, that we were welcome Cool interview. Here. Yeah, don't worry about it, man. Always. Nice. And Good guys, stuff. I hope you guys liked the interview. If so, then please give the video a thumbs up. If yes. you have any questions, you still want to ask Martijn, put them in the comment section below and I will ask if I, uh, if I can still put them through. And I see you all in the next one. Bye-bye. Later. Later.